it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Right, this one's about how you doing this Hi guys, uh, this video today is going to talk all about zinc production. Okay, so this is one of the things that you, uh, you need to know. So I'm going to go uh, through right from mining the ore uh, all the way up to the production. And you need to make sure you know these processes. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing you need to understand is how zinc is found in the ground. Okay, now zinc is a um, it's sort of intermediate reactivity metal. Okay, um, so it will be com found combined quite readily with other elements in the ground. And normally uh, zinc exists as ZNS, all right, which is called zinc blend. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what you normally um, find in, in the form in the ground. So what happens is we, uh, we dig out the ore, okay, the zinc blend. We don't really need to do any concentration at the site, which is normally the first step, because it comes in a sort of a high enough concentration there already. So what we do need to do, the very, very first step, is the, co is the conversion, okay. If you try to electrolyze a solution that has, of zinc sulfide, okay, what you're going to find is you're going to get some products of sulfur which are not ideal. Okay, they create acidic solutions. Okay, and um, they can be quite harmful and um, are quite dangerous to work with. So we quite often use a different step. So the first step that we're going to do is just simply to convert it. Okay, so this conversion uh, is very very straightforward. Okay, in, involves taking the um, zinc sulfide and roasting it in air. Okay, so we roast in air, okay, and one of the main components in air, oxygen, it obviously is oxygen, okay. So this is the equation, you zinc sulfide, okay, you react it with oxygen gas, okay, and you get zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide, <coughs> okay. So obviously we need to balance this equation, okay, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, there's three oxygens on this side, there's only two here, so the really, really simple way to do it is just go three over two oxygen. So oxygen gas, solid, solid, and that's a gas, you sulfur dioxide, okay? The other way to do it is two, three, two, two, if you want to go a bit further. But this roasting in air is the first step, this is the conversion, okay, where we convert it to a form that we can use, okay? Now what we do um, is we actually dissolve it, okay, or uh, what's called leaching, all right, into a solution, um, into some water, in, in this case that contains some sulfuric acid, which allows us to make a solution that we can electrolyze, okay. So the second step is your leaching or your dissolving, okay. And so in that step what we do is we take our zinc oxide here, we dissolve it in sulfuric acid, Okay, and it's a metal oxide. Metal oxides are basic, so it's just an acid-base reaction. We get a salt, which in this case is zinc sulfate, and we get water, okay? So the really, really good thing now, all right, is that we now have a solution we can electrolyze. We know the sulfate salts are good to electrolyze because the sulfate doesn't react, okay? So we've converted it from zinc sulfide, which is um, not very easy to use and quite dangerous to electrolyze, into something that we can electrolyze that's quite useful. Now, what happens, because we didn't do any concentration in the initial step, we went straight to a conversion, is we do sometimes have some impurities inside our solution. Now, because zinc is a pretty um, reactive metal, if we've got metals in there that are less reactive than zinc, they're going to form at the cathode in preference. So the next step that we need to go through, all right, is remove the impurities. Okay, the two impurities we normally have in here are cadmium and silver, okay. Both of those are less reactive, all right, which means both of those will undergo reduction and form at the cathode instead of the more reactive zinc. So what we do is just a straightforward what we call metal displacement reaction and we use the fact that zinc is more reactive to get these two out of solution. So I'm going to start with cadmium, for example. So if we've got sol um, cadmium ions in there dissolved in our aqueous solution, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some powdered zinc, okay. Now we use powdered because that obviously increases the surface area which uh, means the reaction will occur faster. And what we do here, because zinc is more reactive, it displaces the less reactive metal from solution. So what we end up with is solid cadmium here and zinc ions. Now this is really, really 
useful because all that's going to happen is these zinc ions are going to undergo reduction and be formed at the cathode. So we're going to get it back. All right, we're not really going to be losing any zinc through here at all. We're just putting it into solution and then um, um, reducing it and getting it straight back at the cathode, which you'll see in a minute. Same thing happens for the silver. Okay, silver ions there in solution. We now need two of these. They are displaced by a zinc, right, more powdered zinc to get solid silver plus more zinc ions. Okay, so this way we've been able to remove the two common impurities that are in there. Now, what you need to realize is that these two products are not what we're intending for the, um, for the actual um, industrial process of getting zinc. So cadmium here as a product, that's a waste product. Okay, there's no commercial value for that. And so that's a waste product that we just get rid of. Whereas our silver on the other hand is a byproduct. Okay, it's not our entire, uh, our intended um, product, but it is one that can be sold off for a commercial value. Okay, so that's a byproduct in here. Okay, I should mention one other byproduct at this point as well. If you go back to that initial um, roasting in air where we had the zinc sulfide plus the oxygen, one of the products that we got was sulfur dioxide. That sulfur dioxide can be dissolved in water, all right, to give us sulfurous acid, which we can use uh, commercially as well. So the sulfur dioxide or the acid here are also byproducts because um, we can use them in the reaction or we can sell them off for a commercial value, okay? So <clears throat> what we've done is we've converted it from zinc sulfide to zinc oxide, okay? So that's the first part. We convert it to zinc oxide. We've done our leaching, okay, which converted it into zinc sulfate. We've removed these impurities of cadmium and silver, and now we're ready for the electrolysis part. Okay, so now we've come to the electrolysis part. So because zinc over here is an intermediate reactivity, what that means is we don't need to use um, the molten salt in order to get the product okay, of our zinc. If we were using something like um, sodium or aluminium, okay, they're very, very reactive. So you have to force the production of the metal at the cathode by using the molten salt. In this case, because it's intermediate, we can get away with electrolyzing the aqueous solution. Now, the main benefit of that is twofold. One, it's a lot cheaper, okay? Because um, the temperature is required to melt a salt and then the temperatures required um, to be able to hold that um, in the container while it's being electrolyzed are quite high, so that's very, very expensive. Okay, number two, it's obviously cheaper. All right, so it's cheaper because you need less um, temperature in there and that makes it safer as well. Okay, so it's quite beneficial if you can get away using the electrolysis of the aqueous solution. So what they do is they set up the um, electrochemical cell like this, okay? And in here you'll have two electrodes Okay, you're connecting your power supply here like this, and in here you've got your aqueous zinc sulfate solution. Okay, whoops. And so you pass your electric current through, okay, through, and um, what happens, obviously we're gonna be using inert electrodes because we don't want those to be involved in the reaction at all. Okay, so um, you pass your electric current through and you get two half equations occurring. Now what we're trying to get happening is this, so, uh, zinc ions, picking up electrons to form solid zinc, all right? Now, that's a reduction because it's a gain of electrons. Reduction occurs at the cathode, okay? Ganeep in an electrolytic cell, the anode is positive. So this here is the anode, okay? This here is the cathode, okay? So this is where our solid zinc is being plated onto, okay? What happens at the anode? is it's an aqueous solution, so we've got water in there, so we're gonna be aqueous, um, electrolyzing the um, water, and so we're gonna get oxygen gas out of it. So H2O forming half O2 plus 2E minus plus 2H plus. So obviously what's gonna happen here at the anode is we're gonna get an acidic solution because we're forming H plus, okay? And uh, we're gonna get bubbles of oxygen gas coming up here. What happens is that the zinc is plated onto the electrode here, Okay. Once we're finished with the um, electrolysis, what we do is we turn it off, we take the cathode out, all right, and we, um, we basically just strip or peel off the, uh, the zinc that's placed onto it, and we put it into an ingot. All right. uh, an ingot is basically, it's the same as what a gold bar is, so like a rectangular thing that's just for ease of transport. Now, 
The zinc that comes out the end here is about 99.98% pure, okay, because we've removed all these impurities of cadmium and silver. If we hadn't got rid of these, at the cathode we'd have cadmium ions picking up electrons or silver ions picking up electrons, plating onto the cathode as solid, so that would obviously reduce the purity of our final product, all right, which would not be a good thing. So we get rid of those to make sure that here we only get zinc plated. Okay, um, so all of your cadmium and silver deposit would be down the bottom, you could get rid of that. Okay, and it's obviously the silver, um, sorry, the zinc that is used, the powdered zinc, you get back in this equation anyway. Okay, so this is obviously the final step, number four, which is electrolysis. Okay. So we didn't have to go through every step. We didn't have to go through refining at the end. We didn't have to go through concentration at the beginning. But what we did do is we did a conversion. All right, and this conversion kind of has two parts. So we convert it from zinc sulfide to zinc oxide. All right, and then we dissolve it in sulfuric acid to make zinc sulfate. So that's our conversion to a form that makes it um, usable for us. Then what we did is we removed any impurities of cadmium and silver so they weren't produced at the cathode over here. Then what we did is we did the electrolysis, okay? Pass electric current through, your zinc is produced over here at your cathode, okay? So that's where your zinc's gonna be plated onto, all right? And we can remove that off, form it into ingots uh, with about 99.98% purity. All right, that's zinc production. Hopefully um, I've explained it reasonably well, okay? If not, you might wanna go back and have a look. Um, make sure you understand it. Make sure you can explain each of these steps. They love putting in extended response questions about this. Um, we're just asking you to put the half equations and everything in. Hopefully this has been helpful. As always, got any questions, just ask. Thanks, guys.